reading for this morning is from Exodus 24, verses 12 through 18. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and stay here, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and commandments I have written for their instruction. Then Moses set up with Joshua his aid, and Moses went up on the mountain of God. He said to the elders, Wait here for us until we come back to you. Aaron and Hur are with you, and anyone involved in a dispute can go to them. When Moses went up on the mountain, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai. For six days the cloud covered the mountain, and on the seventh day the Lord called to Moses from within the cloud. To the Israelites, the glory of the Lord looked like a consuming fire on top of the mountain. Then Moses entered the cloud as he went up on the mountain, and he stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. May God add his blessing to the Lord. God bless our hearts. It's from St. Matthew 17, verse 1 through 9. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured. Before them, his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became a white as a light. Just then appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud Say, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciple heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up. And he said, Don't. When they look up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down from the mountain, from the mountain Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone what he has seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Word of God for God's people and God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Come and let's pray. Loving God, we are so thankful for this day and we thank you for your word. As we come together, we remember your promise. If we gather in your name, you'll be there to bless and we, we receive that blessing. The blessing of being together, the blessing of being availability, and the blessing of your presence is an awesome, loving, gracefully peace feeling in our hearts. We ask the Spirit to remain with us in our uh, inner word and also hymns and songs to be finished today. And we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Last Sunday we were talking about Jesus had been preaching from the mountain or the mountain side, talking about blessing and all the great things that help our life anyway. How do we live with our life according to his kingdom? And this morning that Jesus is still on the top of the mountain and we call it transfiguration. 
And we, we know Transfiguration Sunday, the Sunday before the Ash Wednesday. It stayed like that, never changed. When the Transfiguration come, then we know the next Wednesday, it will be the Ash Wednesday is the beginning of the Lenten season. Transfiguration Sunday is not a kind of a Sunday that you are exciting to be there or wake up in the morning and say, oh boy, I can't wait to go to church because it's a transfiguration. It's not like Easter or Christmas or Thanksgiving, but it's a kind of a Sunday that stay like normal, common to all of us. And he us that Jesus did all the miracles. And we try to find out how he do it and why he do it. And how we, he do it, we don't know anything about it. But we know why he do it. So when Jesus healed the sick, we didn't know how he do it, but we know why he do it? Because the sick is not walking. He fed the 5,000 people. We don't know how he do it, but we know why he do it. Because he had a compassionate heart for the 5,000 of them being all day. Nothing or any food for them to eat. And now we're coming to the transfiguration. There is a common ideas over there. But I don't want you to take away at the beginning of the reading, it said six days before Jesus took the mountain with the three disciples that he loved. But that six days is very important to all of us to look at that. Because these are common things over there for us to look at that. And here it is in Jesus. Jesus took with them after six days. Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. In that six days, Peter confession to Jesus. When Jesus asked them, asked them a question, what do people say, who that I am? You know, Peter always wanted to do things first. Even though he wasn't thinking, but he wanted to say something without thinking. And so many things in the Bible, he said without thinking. And all of a sudden came from his mind, you are the son of the living God. I said, yeah, Peter. You nail it, you are a good man, you know it. Yes, I am the son of the living God. And down the way, that Jesus is talking about, I'm on my way to Jerusalem. I'll die in Jerusalem. They crucify me after three days, raised from death. And Peter said, Jesus, it's nothing going to happen. Nothing going to happen. And then Jesus said, Satan, stand behind me. With all of that, make the disciple terrified. When Jesus said he will go to Jerusalem, and there's a final for him on his journey, the disciples were thinking of Jesus. Jesus, we follow you because we trust you. We love you because you love us and love others. We are not going to take it. Even Jesus inside himself is a burden for him. For me to go to Jerusalem and die over there.
He think of that. How hard it is for him to go to Jerusalem. At the same time, his disciples were thinking that Jesus is going over there with me. There's no Jesus at all for us. And all of that on Jesus' shoulder and the disciples were terrified and fear inside themselves because of that. And then Jesus took them to the mountain and they were there. And all of a sudden, then Jesus transformed. There's light from him. Not only that, but Moses and Elijah were there. Elijah and also Moses was known. But when they are together, it is helping Jesus, encourage him, strengthen him, give him a confidence. To take it, take the road to the road. Take that road. At the same time, there's Peter, James, and John were there, like watching a movie. And Jesus, Moses, and Elijah were there, and they are here watching with terrified inside themselves for what is going on. But then all of a sudden, the cloud started to form again. And the voice came from that cloud. One particular word from the word, from the voice of God. Listen to it. That really changed everything. Because Peter, James, and John, they are spectators, they are watching Jesus. Moses and Elijah, they are not involved at the game. They only nervous, racks, shaken, waiting for what is going on because they had Moses and Elijah for the first time for them to see them face by face. Elevate. Their fear. But in one word that God is saying, This is my beloved son, whom I love of him. I will please listen to it. That changed everything. Instead of Peter, James, and John watching. They are spectators. Now they are involved in a game. They're strange. If you're watching the movie, you know you're watching that movie. And all of a sudden, you are involved in that movie. By only one word from God, listen to it. Change everything. They fell in fear because of listening to him. Because what was happening to Jesus, Moses, and Elijah now jumped into their lives. The 
They are part of the, not only the part of the story, but they are in that story. They are no longer watching or spectators, but now they are involved. God come into their lives and they involve in the story. And it is changing everything. Change everything. Brothers and sisters, of course they are terrified. It is a constant battle inside themselves to see what is going on on the mountain with Jesus, Moses, and Elijah having a conversation. They don't know what to do. But to see Jesus with a light from himself. And that is the first time for Jesus put on his glory as God, creator, sustainer. First time for Jesus. He wore that before he was born to the earth. But we didn't see that. Now we see that. That's the glory of God is coming into our lives and involve everything that we are doing. Not only really coming to involve, but we are getting to involve. Listen to Him all the time of our lives. And this is how it happened with the disciples. They terrified because God breaks into their lives. We fear because God breaks into our lives. Because it's hard for us to let go of our own life. But proceeding death of all life must be a new life. When God is involved in our lives, it changes our lives to a new life. At the same time, we want to let go of the old life in us, but it's so hard for us to do that. It creates fear for us because the new life is unknown. What are we going to do when we go over there? But we like the life that we have now because we experience what we have. So when God breaks into our lives, He changes our life to involve in that break ins. Of course, we had to terrify. If I had my neighbor, someone broke in last night to the house, I know we are the next. I have to put more locks, make security, or put fences. We don't want anybody to break into our lives. But it's different. When God is breaking into our lives, we have a new life. We are transformed. We are reborn again. We are transfiguration. We have light in our life because we have power inside ourselves. At the same time, Jesus had the same power. You think about it. Think about the mountain top. We walk in fear every time of our lives. The only person that break into our lives to remove that fear, that Jesus. And Jesus was God, fully God. And all of a sudden, there was a human in there. 
There was a human hand. <clears throat> there was a human hand touching them. Because God is fully human. Peter, James, John, get up. Get up. Do not be afraid. God break into our life. He touched us. When He touched us, he said, get up. Do not be afraid. We know that in the Bible, so many stories, that Jesus touched in the life of the people. And they have a new life. They live in fear. But when God touched in their life, it changed. Amen something better for them. Transfiguration, transforming our life from the old life to a new life, get up. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid for the future you are going. I have light and the light I will give to you and you can walk I will be with you. I'll be with, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You see how important when Jesus breaks into our lives. How many times that we've done seeing people, they have cancer. And they say, We visit the dying people, hug them and comfort the family. They say thank you. Thank you. I want to finish with this. When Jesus touched them, they changed their lives. Peter's changed and John. And here's what Jesus told them. When we go down from the mountain, don't tell anyone until I raise from dead. That is so hard for us. If I was there, I can tell hey, Christiana, I saw Moses and Elijah and Jesus, there was light from there. Stop telling. And I know many of us will be. But remember that God said, listen to him. And for those that listen to Jesus, they know exactly what God wants him or her to do in their life. Because when he brings to our life, we change. And he touched us and said, get up. Do not be afraid. Amen. But there were two things very important. When Jesus told his disciples, please don't tell anyone until I raise from dead. Two things. First, nobody believed him. Nobody believe you. And second, go and do what I do. Don't tell. Go and do it. My brothers and sisters, there were many, many people inside the church and outside the church need our touch. Do not be afraid. There were family members.
words. They can't wait for the touch. Get up. Do not be afraid. In Byron, there was a lady over there diagnosed with cancer. After fighting with the cancer, he be she became a cancer survivor. She asked her church, she would like to start a program, touching program. Just stay with her. And now the program stand by itself is a place available for the cancer patient to be there and having their own time. Kaleidoscope. What about us? I am thinking I'm not going to do it or do it. In our society now, they oppose touching. But we are going with the power that God brings into our lives and change and the power inside us and that is the power we're going to take outside and touching people and say, get up, do not be afraid. Starting today. At the beginning of Lent, 40 days of Lent, we will have less meaning, more touching. We have so many programs in town and where you live. Non-profit organization. Named after the people who was touched by Jesus and now they are touching many lives. There are people right now here. They are touching other lives because Jesus touched their life. I encourage all of us and starting next after next Sunday when I come back in March I invite one person to talk about touching us in 40 days and I challenge all of us look there were people who came and they called came and they go. Can we start from there? Just touch him. My sister, my brother, get up. Do not be afraid. And then we move to the neighbors, move to the places, other places. And you know, you have power. You are the only one who has power because your life that God broke into your life and your life that he had already had the power to say to the people, get up and do not be afraid. Why are we are afraid of? What are we are afraid of? That we are with Jesus on the mountain and he broke into our lives and give us a new life. We are transformed when we are transformed, we have a power and that power, we need to do it for the others because Jesus did it for us. In these 40 days, we will listen to people that are witnessing why they touch. Not how you touch. Why? I touch. And let us pray. Father God, 
all of us over here he touched us he broke into our lives we feared in that fear they say get up do not be afraid I will be with you bless us with the power of God in the Lenten season, we reach out to the people, they are dying, people, they are lonely, people, they need conversation, people need to walk with them, people need to be silent with them, people need to speak with them. Let the transfiguration change our heart and do what he did for us in Jesus name Amen